condition me. But one thing I know, I was blind. But now, he said, I see. That's the only thing that he has. And you know what happened? Let's move on in chapter 9, verse 35. It says there in verse 35, Jesus heard. Does it says there? Jesus heard. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out and he found him. Number one that we have to understand is this. That Jesus is all aware of our situation. Jesus Christ was not, was not sleeping during the time after the miracles. He just, you know, forget this blind man. No. Because it says here in the Bible, Jesus heard. You know, a lot of us, if you, will, if you are not concerned, if you are not interested... Whatever you, you hear in your, in your ears, if you are not concerned, interested, that that's, doesn't matter to you, right? But it says here, Jesus heard. You know why? Because number one, he is concerned. He's hearing all our prayers, brothers and sisters. He knows our mourning. He knows all the words that we are trying to express to God with pain and sacrifices. He knows it. And he is hearing it. And it says here Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. This kind of situation. He is not only concerned but he cares. That's the reason why he heard it. Maybe Jesus Christ, and not maybe, I know and I believe that he was, Jesus Christ, was trying to get a news to this born blind man. And he was saying when they met with this blind man, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Not only that he, you know, heard about it, but Jesus, what it says here, Found him. Jesus found him. When Jesus Christ heard about this news, the throwing and the judgment and etc. etc. Jesus found him. Thank God. A lot of people today, when they are in the midst of trials and difficulties and problems in life. They're looking for some place and some people that could mend this broken, their broken hearts. The only thing that we have to do is to stay faithful. You know why? Because Jesus will find us. Jesus, it says here, found him. It means Jesus Christ six for those people who have the heart. Who is longing for those people who have the heart to really seeking for the face of God. Jesus found him because Jesus Christ seeks and Jesus Christ keeps. When he found this man, he kept it. He kept him. And he asked this question. Jesus Christ said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Jesus Christ didn't did, did stop in hearing the news and then stop seeking and finding him. Number two, we have to understand Jesus is all aware of our longing. There's some emptiness in that man. He don't know where to go. He don't know where to turn to during that time. And so when Jesus Christ found him, then Jesus Christ all aware of his longing to meet this, this, this person, this Messiah, this, this God. He don't know who he, he was during that time. He don't even know what, what kind of power that happens to him. But, but you know, he, he, he just understood by, by the conversation that he has with the Pharisees that he said in, in verse 30 of 9, the man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from here. He opened my eyes. In verse 31, we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. 
And verse 32, he said, nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing, right? That's the only theology that he knows during that time. And he was longing. And so Jesus Christ now asked this question to answer his longing. And Jesus Christ said, do you believe in the Son of Man? When God knows our longing, Jesus will ask. We better be ready when Jesus Christ asks. We should be right in answering that question. Because Jesus is all aware of our longing. Jesus will ask. A lot of people today, they've been longing for something in the emptiness in their hearts. Most of the time, Jesus Christ will ask them, what do you want? And people will say, I want husband. I want wife. I want job. When they had, they have gotten this job and the wife and the husband, and, you know, at the end of it, they found out that it's emptiness again. Because it was not the right answer for Jesus Christ's question. Jesus Christ asks when we are longing of something. And Jesus Christ not only asks, but Jesus knows it. He knew it. Do you believe in the Son of Man? And this blind born, a man born blind knows what he was longing for. He was longing for God that changed his life. Now the question is that, what is the meaning of the Son of Man? What is the meaning of the Son of Man? In Tagalog, anak ng tao. If you will open your Bibles in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, this is a prophecy of the coming Messiah, and all the Jewish people knows it. That this word or this title, Son of Man, was referred to the coming Messiah. Everybody knows it. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, it says here, In my vision at night I look, and there before me as one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. And he approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All people's nation and men of every language worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. This is the title of the coming Messiah. Everybody knows that. As if you were asking, do you know Piolo Pasquale? Everybody knows that, right? <laughs> Martin Idol or Justin Bieber. <laughs> it's it's a common. It, everybody knows that. Do you believe in the Son of Man? And this blind man knew he was not blind anymore during that time. He knew that this the Son of Man is the Messiah. And in verse thirty six, what does it say? He said, He said that who is he, sir? The man asked, and he said, tell me so that I may believe in him. Now, this word is a word from a person not waiting for the Messiah, but a word or a sentence of a person that believes that the Messiah has already come. Because he said in verse 36, who is he, sir? Everybody was waiting for the coming Messiah, the Son of Man. But he said, who is he, sir? It means that the Messiah or the Son of Man yeah. is already there in the midst of them. And he said, tell me so that I may believe in him. Yeah. That is the word of this blind man. 
This word means that he believes that the Messiah has come and he believes that the Messiah has already revealed himself. You know, a lot of us Christians, <clears throat> the power of God already manifested in our lives, but we hasn't arrived in that belief, belief that God works in our situation. We always see this, we always knew, and we always understand that these blessings or these answers that we have taken from this situation, it is because of our effort and not the effort of God. We always tell ourselves, because I'm good, because I'm intelligent, because I'm earning a lot of money, because I'm excellent. But this person believes during that time that the Messiah has come. You know, verse 37, what does it say there? This blind man, former blind man, says that, tell me, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Number three, Jesus is all aware of our faith. If God is all aware of our faith, he will manifest himself and reveal his power in our lives. And you will see miracles upon miracles will happen in our lives. You know why? Because Jesus Christ knows our faith. In verse 37, it says there, Jesus said, you have now seen him. Wow. Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus Christ said, you are seeing him right now. In fact, Jesus Christ said, he is the one speaking to you. You know, Christians here in Canada, Jesus Christ made them as a firefighter, right? We only call Jesus Christ for fire brought out already in our family, in our in our lives, right? As if Jesus Christ is just 911. And so because of this, the word of Jesus Christ, we did we don't even recognize him anymore. The only time that we want to recognize him and know him is that when the doctor will tell us, you know what, you have only one week to live. And you will be seeking a church that says, come and worship with us. All sickness and diseases will be healed. And that's the time that you will look for a church and you will you will try to search for a church or something that would, would give you the answer to your problems. If you have problems with finances during the time that you are, you know, you know everything are flowing with milk and honey. And in your life, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's Sunday or Saturday. But when you were broke, declared bankruptcy, and you have this eviction notice with your apartment, no place to go. That's the only time you will seek for a church. Come, worship with us, and be, and be rich. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. See the difference? This particular person had believed, even though he don't have any understanding about things, he was so firm of his beliefs, he was not shaken, because he knew during that time there, there was this God, a mighty power, that works in his life, that he could not be dictated to deny this. And he was waiting for the manifestation of this Messiah. And Jesus Christ said, you have now seen him. In fact, he's the one speaking with you. The man said, 
Lord, I believe that you worship. Number one, that this man did, when Jesus Christ said, you have now seen him, in fact, he's the one speaking with you. When he realizes that this man, Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Messiah, the everlasting God, healed him. He called him, number one, what does he say? Lord! Lord! You know the meaning of the Lord during that time? Lord during that time actually is a term for an employer. There are a lot of lords during that time. If you, a slave, bought by your lord or a master in the slave market, then that's for life. That person, that, that lord will become your lord the rest of your life. Until such time that that Lord will release you if he wants to release you. Now, that, you know, the, the catch is this. If the, that Lord will not release you, even when you get married a slave, even your children's children and your children will be a property of that Lord. And so if you will call this Jesus Lord, it means that he is the honor. It is curious, Lord, Panginoon. He is not only Lord of your time or of your talent, of your heart. He is the Lord of all. Everything. This blind man realizes that Jesus Christ was the Messiah at that time. And he is God and he called him Lord. A lot of Christians today, they call Jesus Christ as Lord, but Jesus Christ is not really Lord at all. When, the times of, when, when, when it comes to the commitment, our commitment to the Lord, it is just partial. But this man called Jesus Christ Lord. You know why? Because nobody, nobody in his life during that time, only Jesus Christ. And he was saying, Lord, Take my life. I'm yours, Lord, forever. Even my dreams, even my passion. Lord, just you and me. Just you and me. And number two that he did, he did not only call Jesus Christ as Lord, but it says here, I believe. Lord, I believe. It means, Lord, Everything that what you have done in my life, anything that you will say in the future, I will believe. It is not only the miracles that happened to him, but he was saying when he said, I believe. You know what? He was saying that the future works, things that you will tell in my life, suggest, command, I will believe. That is total belief. You know, a lot of people just believe on one thing. People will say, you know what? When we were together with Pastor Bonnie last, you know, first three years, I believed him. But now, I don't believe him anymore, right? He changes the belief. But the belief that says here, when this blind man, for me, blind man says that I believe, he was saying anything, Lord, that you will say, I will believe. And it will never be changed. No matter what people might say. No matter what circumstances will come in my life. I will still believe Lord. Whether the things that may come in my life. Will not be a, a, a circumstance that, circumstances that I like. I will still believe. Even though when time comes. That, that, that you will be silent. As if that your mighty power that I felt, that I experienced, will not move. I will still believe. That's the word of I believe. Depending on the mighty power of God as Lord, who knows the best for us. And last time, last thing that he did, calling Jesus Christ as Lord. And said, I believe. You know what he did? He worshipped him. You know what?
knows the meaning of worship. During that time, in the, in the New Testament time, it means proskoneo. To bow down and to latreo, your God. Not only to bow down, to humble yourself before God, but you are saying, Lord, you, I am acknowledging that you are my everything. For without you, I don't have anything in my life, even my life today. You are my God. That's worship. Whether there's blessing, no blessing, money with no money, in sickness and in health, till death. You will be worshipped by my life. Because worship is the acknowledgement of God in your life. He worshiped him. Now, the blind man who is alone and Jesus Christ being connected with each other, you and me now, against the world. When that, real, that rela re relationship happens, you know what happened? Then Jesus Christ turned his face to the Pharisees in verse 39. Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. During that time, when these events were happening, Pharisees were there. You know why? Because he was under surveillance. And that's the reason why in verse 40, my umimik. Verse 40 says there, some Pharisees who were with him heard him, heard him says this and ask, What are we blind to? May nagriak. That was the words of the Pharisee. And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, you, your guilt remains. Because, you know, during the time, like, no, in, in, in the Philippines, the word Tagalog, bulag ka kasi. It means it's not really literally, physically blind. It means that you are blind of the truth. You are not seeing it. You're just denying it. Our wives will always tell us, right? Bulag ka kasi. You're blind. You're not seeing what, you know, I'm dressed, right? I'm beautiful, see? But you're blind. <laughs> it is not literally blind. That's the reason why when these Pharisees were claiming we are not blind, Jesus Christ was saying because you're just denying the mighty power of God. He rebuked the Pharisees. And this blind man was there, now sees, now he is rebuking the Pharisees. And Jesus Christ was saying, you now really see, not only physically, but spiritually, I opened your eyes. I judged these people. These people are all blind. And maybe I could see and I could feel also the feeling of this blind man that says, Lord, I'm now safe. I'm not saying. One way or another, we are like this blind man in our lives as we journey this life, right? A lot of people will judge us. A lot of people don't even mind what we are feeling and whatever the situation that we are in. But God knows our feeling. God, God knows our hurts and the pain, our struggles. And God is listening to those words in our prayers. God is also seeing the situation that we are in. You know what? Just wait because Jesus Christ will find us. Jesus Christ will find us. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you are a God. You have never lived. Forsake us, O oh God. Always there, seeing us. Lord, I pray, O oh Father, that when the time comes, O oh God, that we are in a situation that we don't know what to do, we don't know what to think, we don't know where to turn to. May you find us, O oh God, like this blind man. 
You know, the longing of our hearts, we're looking for somebody that could feel the emptiness of our hearts. We have gone through a lot of things. We thought that job, money, popularity, properties, assets, things that we could acquire in this world could answer us. No, Lord. We found out that it's not all those things. It is only you, oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh Father, as you manifest yourself in us, as you show, show yourself to us, Lord. We may be like we pray, O oh Father, that we will be like this man who says, I believe, and start to worship you. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, I don't know your situation right now, but God knows. God knows the pain that you are going through. God knows everything. And right now, God is asking. God is asking. Do you really know me? Do you believe in me? That I could do miracles in your life. That I could move mountains. That just in one click, I could banish all your anxiety. Do you believe in me? And the only thing that we will say is, yes, Lord. I believe. And God will start answering the prayers. But the only thing that you could do that and happen to you, you have to have a personal relationship with God. Calling Lord, it means that you are telling to Jesus Christ that He is the owner of your life. That He is the only one that could save you. And so right now, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, call Him Lord. Just follow in this prayer. Lord, I want to accept you as my personal Savior. Be my Lord. Be my God. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that I could not save myself. But now, Lord, I believe of your grace and by faith what you have done on that cross will save me in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray, your oh, Father, for our brethren, for my brothers and sisters right now going through tough times. Lord, I pray that you will bless them all around. Answer the request right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And may the blessing flows in our lives and also in our families right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, all the people of God will say, Amen. 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 Amen.